The Bible says this. And it shall come to pass in the last day. That the mountain of Malta shall be exalted in the top of the mountain. And shall be exalted above the hill. And all nations shall flow unto thee. In Daniel chapter 2. And in verses 44, Daniel was one of those that God gave the, uh, the power to interpret dreams. Daniel had a dream that no one could interpret. A brother the king had a dream that no one could interpret. God gave uh, Daniel the power to interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. In Daniel chapter 2, in the verses number 44, it says this, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Mm -hmm. He said the kingdom shall, never, shall not be left up to other people, but it shall break in pieces, and it shall stand forever. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the church. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister, we are also very much blessed. And no matter what our blessing, what type of blessing that we look at in our life, no matter what we have, what we possess, all came from God. Amen. I guess what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that we don't own anything. God loaned it to us. And he loaned it to us that we might bless others mm -hmm. along the way. Amen. I told this morning to talk to you <clears throat> from 1 Timothy chapter 6. And the verse is number 6, 17 through 19. If you would this morning, turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6, which were read in your hearing. And the reason I chose this particular verse is because when I look around me, and I see how good God is, not only to me, but to, to those that are around me. And, and, and how we take those blessings and how we distribute those blessings to others will determine our, our salvation. You see, one thing about God's blessing, God gives our blessings to us freely. It's not something that we deserve. It's not something that we even work toward because we can't work toward God's blessings, no matter how good we are. Right. And, and one another reason I chose this is because those that are rich in monetary things, in physical riches, sometimes fail to share with those that don't have. And sometimes, my brother and sister, we look at things that we don't have rather than looking at things that we do have. Mm -hmm. God has brought us from a mighty long way. And I want to say that God did not bring us this far to leave us alone. Every day, God blesses us with blessing with it that we don't deserve. God places us, places blessings in our life that we don't even realize that we are being blessed. Or we look around us and we see those people that are around us that, are, that have great possessions. And sometimes we have a tendency to say, I wish that I had what that person had. I wish that I had what 
that he had. But we don't know what that person has went through to get what they got. That's right. And matter of fact, we don't even know whether or not we will be able to even consume the blessing that God has blessed them with. Because I don't care how rich you are. Those blessings, that richness, came from God. Amen. And you hear people say, well, uh, richness is passed down from generation to generation. And some people even call it old money. Amen. That's passed down from generation to generation. But I want to say to you that those that are, have the money that we think that they have, they might not be as happy as we think they are. Well, I had a man tell me one time, he said, I got a lot of uh, finances around me. But if I just had the help to eat one steak, I would gladly lay down this Christmas just to have that steak. Amen? Christmas does not, physical richness, God does not look at physical richness as something that's going to get you into heaven. Brothers and sisters, riches does not buy your way into heaven. You can't buy your way into God's grace and God's mercy. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what kind of family you have or what your background is. Ultimately, we all have to come to God the same way, through his gospel. Yes. God laid down his, his, he laid it down, and, 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 and when God hang on the cross of Calvary, it wasn't nothing that we did that made God go to Calvary. It was God's mercy and God's grace uh, that he showed the water that his father sent him down through 42 generations. He died on Calvary, not because he had to, not because anybody told him to, but because of the love that he had toward us. God already knew in creation when he said that, that servant, or I'm going to preach to you this morning, because I already gave you your Christmas sermon. I said to you, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Christmas sermon. And the reason I say that is because God never said that you were to remember when he was born. As a matter of fact, none of us know when God was born. The Bible does not even say when God was born. God said that you were to remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's what we remember. And that's what we obey. Is that okay? Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 6 this morning, the Bible said, which was read in your hearing, try them, in other words, command them, that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, arrogant, arrogant. You know, have you ever, have you ever met a person that that was just high-minded? No matter what, uh, <coughs> no matter what you say to them, they always got something better than you have. They always better than you. High-minded, amen. Always got their chest out, amen. Always think they more than anybody else. I got more than you. Amen. Uh, I'm better than you are. Amen. But I want to say this this morning. If you're a child of God, amen, you rich. Amen. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me, did you? I say if you're a child of God this morning and you have obeyed the gospel of Christ, then you rich. Amen. And I would rather be a child of God and have God's riches 
that have all the money in the world. Amen? Because in the end of the day, the question will be asked, did you or did you not obey the gospel of Christ? Amen? The Bible says that they be uh, high minded, be not high minded, not trust, trust and say on a witness. But in this living, in the living God, who gives us richly, and I want you to underline that word, richly. Amen? Richly, uh, give us richly all things to enjoy. Whatever you have, amen, whatever you possess, amen, that big fine house, that you live in, God gave it to you. Amen. You didn't get it on your own. Oh, you might have went out and worked, amen, and, and made a living for yourself and stuff like that. Uh, I, I received a paycheck, and then you saved up that money in order to buy that house or that car or whatever it is that you were saved up your money for. But don't you know that God gave you the health and strength amen. to go out and make a living and do that? Amen. It was God that did that. Amen. Uh, and he said in verse 18, he said that they do good. Amen. Oh, well, who is he talking about that they do good? Those that are richly, rich, in physical things, that they do good. Amen. That they be rich in good works. Amen. Good works. Or well, I'm talking about going out and helping others. Amen. Doing good toward others. Forgiving one another. Loving one another. Those are good works. Amen. Helping one another along the way. My brothers and sisters, do you not know that we need each other? Amen. Let me say that again. I say we need each other. Amen. Every one of us in here needs somebody. Amen. And, and, and you know you hear people say, well, I don't need nobody. Uh, I, I, I can do it all by myself. No, you can't. Amen. Amen. You need somebody. And every one of us in here, my brother says, all I have somebody close enough to us that when we start going through trial tribulation, you can go to that person and talk to that person, and that person will sue you. And you should not have to worry about whether or not what you said to that person, you get out on the head of the highway. The only way it ought to get out is that you tell it. Not the person that you told it to. Amen. Everybody ought to have somebody that they depend on. Amen. Amen. Uh, he said, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. In verse number 19, it said, laid up in store for themselves. Amen. And now, he ain't talking about physical stores here now. Let me, let me go back in and say this now. He said, laid up in store, but I'm going to show you why. He said, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation. Amen. Against the time to come. Amen. And then he said, that they may be whole, that they lay, may lay hold on eternal life. Amen. My brother and sister, you want to lay hold on eternal life? It ain't about uh, physical uh, richness. Amen. It's about spiritual riches. Amen. It's about God's grace and God's mercy. If you're in God's grace and you're God's mercy, you have did what God said do. Amen. That's spiritual riches. That's what we lay up. That's what we should be laying up. Because one of these days, we will have to, every one of us in here gonna have to stand before God. And the question will be asked, did you or did you not? Obey my son's word. Because right now we obey the son. Because the Bible says all power is given unto the son. Amen. All power. Amen. And the son say. Let me say that again. And the son say. Except you obey me. Amen. How do you obey that? Except you do what I do. Amen. So. I'm going to get you where I need you to go. Okay? My brother 
says, I want to give you an example because I want to tie this verse in. These verses in, and I want to tie it into Luke. Right. Turn your Bible to Luke. Chapter 20. Luke chapter 20. In the verses 16 to 21. My brothers and sisters, one way that the Bible teaches is the way Jesus teaches is through parable. So what is a parable? A parable is something earthly that God explained when he laid something earthly down beside something heavenly because he wants to explain to you what heaven is like. So that's what a parable is. So in, in, in Luke chapter 16, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 12, in verse number 16, I want to show you what riches would do. It said in, 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 in verse number 16, 12, in verse number 16, it said, and he's been a parable. A two day of faith. The ground of a certain rich man. Brought for a thing. Here's a man that has been blessed. Because the Bible said that of his ground brought for plentiful. Amen. So when you plant a crop and it brings forth plentifully, that means everything that you plant. Just about came up. Mm -hmm. Amen. So here's a rich man. Now he's already rich. But the Bible said that his, 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 his field brought forth plentiful. And it goes on to say, it said, and he thought within himself. Now I want to see here how he's thinking within himself. In other words, he's talking to himself. He's so rich, amen, in physical stuff that he done started talking to himself. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, to himself, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. Did not we say in 1 Timothy, did not when Paul here was writing the letter to him, didn't he not say that those that have distribute to those that don't have? Right. Did he not say that? Right. Now, here's a rich man. Now, I'm sure that there were people around him that did not have. And, 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 and since he had all the pitiful here, why not distribute to those that don't have? Right. Oh, oh y'all pray with me this morning. Amen? Yeah. But the Bible says that as he began to talk to himself, he said, and I thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room uh, where to restore my fruit. And then the Bible said, and this he said, this I will do. Oh, you don't forget about what a blessing came. He should have forgot about it, that God allowed this people to bring forth plentifully. Amen. He done forgot about that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he said, here's what I would do. Now, my brother and sister, he done took God out the picture. And it's about I now. My brother and sister, when we take God out the picture, amen. And we begin to reflect on what I have done. Don't you know that's sin? Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I ain't did nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. I didn't break. I didn't. This rich man here did not have anything to do with the plant of this fruit. Right. This was God that called 
frog caused this field to bring forth plentiful. Right. Amen? It was God. He said, uh, and, 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 and he said, this I will do. I'm going to pull down, I'm going to tear down this frog. Mm -hmm. Because it's just too small for me. Amen? And I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to feel me a bigger ball. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, 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 my brother and sister, if, 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 if his ball is already full, amen, God has already blessed him to have his barn full of fruit. Why not distribute to those that don't have it? Right. Amen? Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Now, first Timothy said, that I should have distributed those, those that are rich. Don't forget those that are not rich. Right. Amen. He said, and, and, and said, this I will do. I'm going to pull down my bonds and build them greater, and there will I restore, restore all my fruit and my good. And I, oh, now there go I again. Mm -hmm. And I, would say to my soul, I'm gonna talk to my soul now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not only did I talk to myself, now I'm gonna talk to my soul. I'm gonna tell my soul what to do. Amen. He said, and I, Amen, would say to my soul, soul. Oh, come on, soul. He said, soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Hey, soul, you got a lot of stuff here. Laid up for me, he said, uh, take, take, now you lay back. Take it easy. Amen. That's what I'm gonna say to my soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, take it easy, eat, drink, oh, and be made. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna say to my soul. You know, I'm gonna talk to my soul. Because I got everything that I need. I, my brother and sister, got everything I need. I done took God out of the picture now. It ain't about God no more. It's about what I have now. Amen? Mm -hmm. My brother, don't you realize that God has already <coughs> blessed him? Amen. Now what he needs to do is, is, is extend that blessing towards somebody else. Right. Amen? And now, let's go on. He said, but God, oh, it's time for God to speak now. But God said to him, amen, uh, thou fool. God called him a fool. Mm -hmm. But sister, when we take God out the picture and we start talking about what I have done, and when it started to get to the point, I, me, and my, amen, God said, you fool. Amen. He said, I fool. This night, my, your soul is what? Is required of thee. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Turn your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 11 this morning. And the verse of number 9. And I want you to see here for Solomon with all his wisdom, the Bible said that there would, there would never be one with more wisdom than Solomon had. Amen? Look at it. I, look at it. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 in verses 9. It said, Rejoice! Amen? O young man, in thy youth, and, lay, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eye. But, Y'all see that butt there? Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you see the butt there? Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, but. Amen. Uh, but. Know that. You know this. You can have a good time now. 
You can go enjoy yourself now, your peace. But know this. Amen. That for all these things, God will bring thee unto what? Into judgment. Everybody. 
Amen? Amen. So, in 1 Timothy, the, 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 the title was, Trust Not in Worldly Riches. My brother, my brother, sister, we can't trust in those worldly riches. That's right. Why? Because you cannot get to heaven by just trusting in worldly riches. Amen? Mm -hmm. If you want to get to heaven, it's got to be spiritual riches. Right. Amen? Being rich in God's grace. Being rich in God's way. And you cannot do that unless you first obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can't, you can't, uh, see, spiritual blessings come through God. That's it. Spiritual blessings come through Christ. Let me say it again. Spiritual blessings, we all are blessed. Amen. Every one of us in here is blessed when you are obey the gospel of Christ, you feel blessed. Because the sun shines on the gym as well as dungeon. So we all are blessed. But only spiritual blessings come from God. <coughs> Amen. And you can't get spiritual blessings. You see, if God gave a, a, a person that had not obeyed the gospel of Christ spiritual blessings, what's the need of being a child of God? Huh? Think about it. Think about it. Spiritual blessings come from Christ. And so many times, my brothers and sisters, day after day after day after day, if you children a child of God, God gives you spiritual blessings. Amen. Amen. And the most, most highly spiritual blessing that you would ever have is when he sent his son to the cross. Amen. That's, that's the spiritual blessing. Amen. When he sent his cross. I bet when he sent his son to Calvary to each and every one of them. My brother and sister, that's the lesson this morning. Rely not on physical blessing. Because one day, all of us going to die. <laughs> and whatever physical blessing that you have, whatever it is that you have, you're going to have to leave it to somebody. Yeah. And the Bible said, who knows? Solomon said, who knows? Whether that person that you leave it to will be a fool, or will he be a wise man? Right. Will he take those things that you have left behind? Amen. And will he expired on them, or will he, or will it, with, or within a year, six months, all will be gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Solomon said, it's just vanity. The vexation of the soul, it just mm -hmm. don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Amen. It just don't make sense. And my brother and sister, it don't make sense if you live your life here on earth and die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. It just don't make sense. Amen. Amen. It just don't make sense to live here on earth in hell and then die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Well, that, that don't make sense. No. But you don't have to do that. Amen. The same God that saved me is the same God that will save you. Mm -hmm. Same one. Amen. And my brother and sister, the thing about it, the same way I obeyed the God, God laid it out. It ain't no different. You can't, you can't be voted in. You know, uh, uh, you can't not come by Christian experience. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 you, uh, you can't say, long your heart is right. Amen. We all have to go and have to be saved the same way. God made it so simple. Amen. Amen. It's so simple. And we all do it. The same way. Amen. First of all, all of us must obey the gospel of Christ. That's simple. What is that gospel? It's simple to do. It's simple that Christ died, that he was there, and that he rose again. That's the gospel. Amen. And I don't care what kind of Bible you got, it's all going to say the same thing. All of them. Amen. You can tell that verse out if you want to. And go across the street to a different church where they preach, as long as your heart is right, you'll be saved. But guess what? Somebody about everybody else is about to go have the same thing. Amen. Amen. That, that same gospel. Amen. How Christ died, how he appeared, and how he rose again. Three things that he did. Amen. Well, we too must die. Mm -hmm. We too must be buried. And we too must rise again. Christ. Goes out of the grave. We rise out of the water and the grave of baptism. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the way we rise. That's Amen. Right. Uh, so, Brother Ty, how do you obey that? Well, the first thing you got to hear that. 
I just told you what it was. Amen. Then you got to believe that. Amen. Do you believe that he died? Do you believe that he was buried? Do you believe that he, believe that he rose again? Amen. Then you got to repent. Well, repentance means that you have to change. You got to change some things in your life. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to make a 180 degree turn, don't you? Amen. It's called repentance. Amen. Then you got to confess. Amen. It ain't about confessing what you did. Because I don't want to know what you did. Matter of fact, it's not important to me what you did. Amen. You have to confess that he is the Son of God. Amen. That's the confession. That's the same confession that's made in, in the same confession that's made in, in, in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Amen. Then you have to be, then you have to be washed in a water grave or baptism. Why? Because you both see it. Hmm. It's just that simple. Amen. You go into the water to wash that sin away. Yeah. Amen. And what's going to wash that sin away? That blood is going to wash it. Because when Christ hang on the cross, amen, and they pierced him in the side, two things came out, blood and water. Mm -hmm. Blood brought about his church. Water brought him make of sin. And there's only one church in the Bible. Amen? Right. And if you're here this morning, and you are in another church that you can't read about in the book, I'm concerned about my soul. I was concerned about myself. So then, and then once you come out of the water, God adds you to yes. his church, Amen. which is his body. And why does he add you there? So you can be taught. Amen. Amen. It's a teaching process. We all grow in Christ. None of us are where God wants us to be. None of us are where God expects us to be. Amen. But we all grow. Amen. We all grow in Christ. And one of these days, my brother and sister, if you want to hear him say a one, well done, that good and faithful service, you're going to have to get in the church. That's right. That's right. It's just that simple. You're just going to have to get in, in the body. Amen. Amen. You're just going to have to get in. Amen. That's, that's the message this morning, my brother and sister. Don't count on physical blessings. Amen. Because physical blessings, our physical riches will not get you into heaven. But spiritual riches will. Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet this morning. God bless you.